welcome back today we will be talking about another method which is going to help us to understand the human reliability in last class we talked about human reliability what is the importance of human reliability in a particular system and then we tried to understand one particular technique that was named as hurt right now this uh, class we are trying to understand a very peculiar or typical uh, technique which is uh, common and practiced in industry uh, to understand the human uh, reliability as well as we are talking about human error to analyze that human error. So, name of the technique is cognitive reliability and error analysis method. Cognitive reliability and error analysis method we call it in short form as CRIM. So, let us understand the background of this particular tool. So, it is not very old tool, it is developed in 1998 and human reliability analysis the mostly mostly widely utilized second generation HRA technique. Among these all uh, kind of techniques that we have this is one of the in the second generation. So, what are the background of these techniques mainly the task analysis then finding out the opportunities to reduce the error and the possibilities to consider human performance with regard to overall safety of a particular system. So, this use in HRA that is the human uh, you know, reliability analysis for the purpose of evaluating the probability of a human error occurring throughout the completion of a specific task. So, to reduce the likelihood of errors occurring within a particular system. So, when we understand that what are the possibilities are there error to occur then we can definitely take a precautionary measure that we should we should not do that error right so if we uh, beforehand we understand then definitely there will be an easy method that we can take and we can reduce the number of error happening in the particular system so these techniques actually help us to do that and it also lead to an improvement in the overall level of safety of course if we can reduce the level of accidents number of accidents we can improve the safety. So, cream is very important tool to understand the whole system and from the perspective of the human error to occur in a particular system. So, two versions of these techniques are available we should do first the basic version once we get the result of it then we can go ahead with the extended version. So, what is the basic version? It provides an initial screening of human error to understand the error probability range. Okay. So, very first line what we are going to do? We are going to understand the probability of human error in that particular situation. So, that is the basic one. Thus, in the second one what it happens that it uses the results of the basic version to obtain the detailed value of the error probability. Okay. So, actually we are trying to do in the extended version detailing out those probabilities and finding out the minor issues over there so that we can improve the whole system. So, the application of the extended version is needed when the probability of action failures is acceptably low. Okay. So, if it is very low then only we can go ahead. So, these have in two primary features. Okay. Ability to identify the importance of human performance in a given context and a helpful cognitive model and the associated framework which is usable for both prospective and retrospective analysis. When we do prospective, so it allows the likely human errors to be identified and when it is retrospective, it quantifies the errors that have already occurred. So, we can do it after 
accidents and we try to find out what are the uh, things went wrong and how do we improve in future that is one and if we are doing prospective so uh, once we have the system ready we try to foresee what are the possibilities are there to do an error and how do we minimize it so both way this particular tool is applicable and we can get the result so where do we use them maybe in the healthcare system engineering system business model nuclear power plant any kind of transportation so aviation railway road transport everywhere this type of screen method can be used and we can evaluate the error happened in that particular system or the whole process so the whole method is based on a cognitive model it presents an error classification that integrates the individual technical and organizational factors it also provides a step by step description of operator performance analysis and this whole thing is classified into two one is phenotype another is genotype so in phenotype what we are trying to understand that the human error may be related with its manifestation whereas this genotype the manifestation a particular manifestation which is the causes of any kind of human error so recipro both way we are trying to understand the cause and the effect okay so that way we try to get or analyze the data which is available in the crim so phenotypes are the results of interaction between the genotypes and the environment so that is the common understanding of it now let us look at the uh, kind of interaction it has in a particular system if you talk about the this particular cream and the human reliability analysis or that is the hra and in in a particular system so here you can see that if we are having a typical manifestation here we have major two impacts one impact it comes from genotypes that is the causal factors and of course the contextual or environmental context okay where this is happening is it happening indoor is it happening outdoor is it happening at the transportation sector where okay so that is the environmental context now both genotype and environmental context are the major causal factors and which is going to get reflected in the phenotypes okay now when we understand these two things we need to understand also that these also are having some kind of external influences what are those if we talk about genotypes we have the personal factors of course organizational factors and technical factors so when i'm talking about the genotype of a system it is highly connected with the person person means the operator right how the operator is actually acting upon it then the organizational factors what are the peers how the uh, job demands are and all those things okay and the technical factors so knowledge availability of the resources materials ma machines and everything so these all are the influencing factors of the genotype and definitely technical factor is connected with your environmental context okay so this is how the genotypes and phenotypes are interacting with each other now before we go ahead with the example and steps of the cream method we need to understand one important model that is the contextual control model which is going to be major part of this particular method okay so it this particular model actually determine the requested cognitive function level in order to implement the analyzed performance it also use of the four basic models that is the scrambled control opportunistic tactical means uh, related to your uh, techniques and the procedures and all those things and then strategic control so 
what it does the identify the differing levels of control and of also an operator has given the context and the characteristics which highlights the occurrence of distinct conditions. So, control models as I mentioned these are the four things or four controls to be taken care. So, these all four controls are used in the cream model. So, let us understand one by one. So, what is scramble control? It is a choice of forthcoming action is unpredictable and haphazard. So, something is going to happen, but you do not know. So, it is completely unpredictable and it is haphazard. It is not coming in sequence. Once this is happening, then uh, another thing is happening, then again first thing is happening, then maybe another fourth uh, element is coming. So, all are scrambled. So, that is why it is called scrambled control. Then is the opportunistic. So, if it is a scrambled control, you really need lot of attention and there is high chance of missing something or doing some kind of error, right? The second one is the opportunistic control. So, what it is? Next action is determined by superficial characteristics of the situation. So, you have some kind of guideline. If this happen, you are going to do this. If that happens, you are going to do that. So, action 1, action 2, they are connected with each other. Then it is opportunistic. So, it says that here we have the possibility through habit and similarity matching. Okay. So, lot of cognitive understanding is also involved in this particular case. Next is tactical that is the performance typically follows the planned procedure and last one is the strategic control which says the plentiful time is available to consider actions to be taken in light of wider objectives to be fulfilled and within given context. Okay. So, these are the four component of your contextual control model. Now, this is how it looks. So, it is a closed loop system. Okay? It is a completely closed loop system. So, if you have some kind of action which is going to give you the information feedback and based on the information feedback, you have the control mechanism here. All these control that we discussed in my in our earlier slide and then it will give your feedback which is going to affect the act further actions which need to be taken and everything is based on your observation, interpretation, planning and execution of the result or of the, of the understanding. Okay. So, this is the COCO M or COCO model or we can say contextual control model. Okay. Now, this is a kind of understanding where from this particular figure that how the common performance condition scores and the control model are connected with each other. Now, here you can see all the probabilities are mentioned for each case for strategics, for tactical, for opportunities and for scramble and these are the value. So, what it says that error probability intervals are classified on the basis of the various control mode like above and the particular control mode determines the level of reliability that can be expected in a particular setting. So, here you can see if this particular axis is saying the reduced reliability and here it says the improved reliability how the locations of this contextual model. Okay, how it is happening? You can see if you have the improved reliability, this is whole thing is here, right? So, if you are you can do a strategic planning and if you have time to do that, of course, reliability of the whole system in, increased or it is uh, good. 
whereas if you do not have time and every information is coming uh, one by one in a haphazard manner then it is very much scramble and you know reliability is like in a reduced state okay so cream methodology basically consists of the these step first is the model definition then cream methodology application then behavioral model development in a simulated dynamic environment and the results validation under the model definition what you have to do you have to define the scenario and you have to analyze the safety and reliability now when we are talking about cream as i mentioned that we have two version one is basic another is extended so in basic we have major first three steps that is the it starts with the hierarchical task analysis we discuss hta in our initial uh, no general um, techniques that is the hta and then cpc evaluation then the control mode or error interval determination in the extended version we have what you have to do that requested cognitive profile construction then you have to do possible failure modes of cognitive function and the error probability definition okay so these are the basic steps for basic version and extended version of cream here i mentioned it in detail okay so you can see in phase 1 if we are talking about the model definition what you have to do define the scenario that is the 1.1 because it is under phase number 1 step and then it is the analysis of safety and reliability in phase 2 what you have to do that cream methodology application when you are talking about cream methodology application there comes first basic and then extended so here you can see the basic one hta cpc evaluation and the control mode and error interval determination okay so that we do and once we finish that we have all these thing strategic technical uh, tactical and then here we get the opportunities and the scrambled method okay so when we are talking about control mode any one of them will be taken care and it comes for the phase 3 now here you can see that phase 3 results comes from the influenced by the extended version extended version already we discussed here this one we discussed so here also it is mentioned in the same way requested cognitive profile construction possible failure modes of cognitive function and the error probability definition once we get the whole thing done it is going to impact here and then this results of this phase 3 will go here for the activity that is the model definition in logic mathematical terms because you have to give the understanding if this is happening then this if this is happening then this so logical connection need to be established once it is done what you have to do that is the model translation in a simulation software and then calibration and evaluation finally you need to do the result validation this is how you are going to detail the cream methodology and you can use this technique to get an understanding of the human error available in a particular system now let us do a small or let us discuss a small case study all the data here i try to discuss from you know a previous case which is being analyzed uh, for different purpose however i have quoted them here to understand how this cream can be performed in a practical scenario so the first one that is the phase one we what you need to do you have to define the model 
here in this particular case what we did in the present phase the model is being defined what was the model a model in a mechanical sector we will see uh, that we actually used the lathe machine for example okay so a model in a mechanical scenario or sector so what we did def definition of the scenario we tried to do the aim of the activity what was the aim of that particular activity the reference organizational scenario of mechanical sector and the analysis of main organizational and productive aspects in which includes the time and processing method duty cycle and the human aspect of the worker that we had carried out once we complete that what we did we outlined the description of the mechanical sector organization so it must uh, this particular lathe machine that we had taken as a case so we did here in a mechanical workshop okay so the sample survey definition that we created and identify the most significant realities from the point of view of safety management in that particular workplace so safety was a major concern and the significant reliability in doing so so when somebody is working in a lathe machine what is the kind of safety is to be taken care if we come uh, try to understand the operation or on a lathe machine from the human reliability perspective okay so next what we did the analysis of the safety and reliability here you can see we have given the description the available risk and how do we conduct the prevention and the protection so the most critical activities were analyzed like welding lathing drilling on all those things and the checklist and the safety data sheet are defined according to the risk associated with each activity when we are performing it okay in phase 2 once we complete the phase 1 then we will go for the phase 2 and we will start with the basic version okay so again i will go back and show you the this one so this is up to this first one okay now we are going to the the all other portion is on the phase 2 okay this portion is under phase 2 okay so what we are going to do here first we will do basic and then slowly we will go ahead with the advanced okay the other one so in basic what we are doing hda the same process we will look at the step by step process and we will break it down in the small elements and uh, create the hierarchy we will create the tree okay so specific operators tasks are ordered in a logical time sequence and here the lathing process of the specific sme is analyzed here you can see these are the ids means activity numbers and under that what is being done so if you talk about id number 1.01 which is the machine setup and work piece positioning under that you have sub ids okay these are all sub ids so what is open the spindle position and progress the bar and close the spindle so this is the one id id is the machine setup and the work piece positioning under that you have sub ids so you actually from the hierarchical task analysis you will create the whole task or we will map the whole task in a paper so here i try to mention that each id indicates each goal so this is the id and this is the goal okay under each goal there are some ids which indicates the sub id so these are the sub ids now in the next step that is the cpc evaluation what is the cpc evaluation let us go back and check again so this is the common performance condition that is the cpc evaluation so you have to understand is it scramble is it opportunistic is it tactile
tactile or strategic. So that part you have to find out. So CPC evaluation is made which is shown in this following table. So here you can see it is like insufficient, then advantageous, inappropriate. So all these things is being taken care. So adequacy of the organization, working condition, these are the points to be taken and the quality level and what is expected here. Okay, so that is being done in the next step. Now, further what we did here one common performance condition that is the working condition to be chosen and the working condition is expected into three level that is the advantageous, compatible or incompatible, either advantageous or compatible or incompatible. Okay, so here you can see it is mentioned like that only. So, here the advantageous working condition must be improved and the incompatible conditions must be reduced. So, that is the requirement. So, wherever you see that something is in advantageous condition, what you need to do? You need design intervention. If you see there is something incompatible condition, to reduce the incompatible condition, what design changes you can do? You can take a decision over there. So, for example, for this particular lead machine, you see here we calculated that improved reliability is 2 and reduced reliability is 5. So, here is the cross section and we see the according to this particular result, we are in the opportunistic section, bisection, okay. And it is necessary to apply the extended version because you can apply it and you can get more result of it. So, up to this particular portion, it is basic version. In advanced or extended version, what you have to do? You have to find out the requested cognitive profile construction. What you have to do? You have to do a cognitive profile construction. So, the purpose of this step is to define the cognitive profile consideration dependencies between cognitive activities and that contextual control model function as shown in this particular figure. So, what it is being done in this you have observation, you have interpretation, you have planning and this in, you, you have execution. Now, these all are the cognitive activities available there and you have to map where it is there. So, suppose I am talking about observe, so it is the observation only. Okay. Whereas, if it is monitor, then it is not only observation, also interpretation. So, if you are monitoring that means you are looking at something, interpreting something, right? So, that way you have to give the uh, description of all the cognitive activities available in that particular task. Once we do that, what we have to do for this particular case of lathe machine, we see that these are the uh, cognitive activities identified because these were the activities and these are the cognitive activities identified for this particular case. You can just do by yourself and you can get the similar value. So, one of the goal is the machine at assistance. The activity under this specific goal is the cutting depth spit, uh, setting and then cognitive activity required for this section is the adjustment and control need for the cognitive activity is the observation. So, that way uh, the cognitive part is being taken care for this uh, particular case of lead machine. In the next step, uh, here what we did that requ requested cognitive profile construction. So, now we know that what is the cognitive profiling is required for this particular lathe machine operation, right? Now, what we have to do? We have to find out the possible failure model of the cognitive function. What we did here? Here, all these 
that contextual control model from there all mode of description is given and here the cognitive functions are given as per our previous table and we narrated the error of modes ok. Now here you can see that if we are talking about open the spindle that is the first activity here you can say it is just an execution there is no observation it is not operation uh, interpretation or it is not planning it is just execution open it right. So that is why we counted here. So executioners error 2 not timely action execution. So if you do not execute in on time then definitely there, there can be an error ok. So, that particular part is being identified. In the next step that is the cognitive failure probability definition that is the CFP what, what we are going to do the starting from CFP table this, this is the specific table and the nominal values of CFP table are need to be identified in the next table that I am going to describe in the next ok. So, here you can see that if it is the adequacy of organization and the qualitative level is insufficient expected effect is reduced then this is the area where is your problem lying and you have to find out that. So, in this table that is we call it as the nominal values for CFP what we can see that for this particular case that is the lathe machine operation not timely action execution and error is 3.0 error minus 3 ok. So, that is being taken care only for that particular operation for all other operation you have to use this table and you have to find out the value ok. So, now then again uh, this uh, is the adequacy of organization you can see it is reduced and these are the values to be taken care and then we see that if you add all these execution values here and uh, you know in, in total then you will get the value of 24. Now, here concern is you have to have a cumulative data. So, for each one you can map you can get those values and finally, at this end you will get this particular uh, cumulative number ok. So, if we talk about the ID number 1.0.0 uh, 1.01 that is the open the spindle and you see the error mode is this uh, this value is like 24. So, it is here and the adjusted CPC is 7.2 error minus 2 ok. So, these values are from example. Now, you may ask exactly how we calculated I tried to describe it, uh, it in your in these slides. However, when you start doing each part it may take longer time ok. It is not that fast you have to understand and perform. So, it may take little longer hours. The next is the model definition in logical mathematical term. So, what we are going to do here that implemented logical mathematical uh, model provides the determination of the organization CPC and the questionnaire is performed according to the specific organizational condition. So, here the development of the questionnaire also is a separate task. So, the logical mathematical model may provide you the production process cycle def definition, then formulation of questions about the CPC, translation of answers in numerical terms of quality level achieved in the CPC evaluation, determination of MTO reliability and the identification of control mode, the extension of model numerical evaluation in case the reliability interval is not satisfactory and the identification of action to be implemented to improve the reliability with evaluation of the probability of error in numerical term. So, this we are going to 
do. So, here you can see that table for evaluation the questionnaire and the improvement performance action on the CPC analysis. This is pre-computed, it is readily available, so you can use them as it is. I should not read it out, you can refer from any open source access of this particular model, so that is available, okay. So, this is available. Now, in the next step, when we are talking about the model translation in a simulation software, what we are going to do? So, what you have to do? You have to allow a self-evaluation of proactive organization's reliability, that is the decision support system and it should able to determine the safety characteristics in this particular workplace and the application can be developed in Microsoft Visual Basics uh, which is referring to the configuration parameters on a database created in the Microsoft Access. So, it is easy to do that and this particular software provides the uh, after the administration of the evaluation questionnaire uh, questions, the identification of action to improve the safety that affecting the reliability index. Okay? So, ultimately we are going to understand what is the impact of it on the reliability index. Then once you do that, then you have the calibration and evaluation. So, through some user interface screenshot and uh, the evaluation and calibration of the simulation software you need to present and these steps like these steps to be followed. What? First is the block diagram of analyzed production process, questionnaire elaboration, determination of error index with the improvements. Okay? When we are talking about the block diagram and uh, diagram of analyzed production, what we are going to do? The user selects blocks relative to the process flow, process flow to be analyzed and always starting from the start symbol. Okay? So, start the process, act that is the process activities, in means material input. So, you are actually describing the system and the output uh, is the out and the end means you stop it. So, uh, close the button or you know switch off this machine or something like that. So, this way uh, you know um, uh, in, in a leading machine you can see these block diagrams are present. Okay? Now, uh, under this calibration and evaluation you have to have a questionnaire elaboration. So, after the definition of the process of the block diagram are proposed uh, question uh, proposed questions to be developed in a simulation model. Okay? Once you do that, then you should determine the error index with any kind of improvement. So, if you have any kind of error, error index, then how do you improve that? That can be done. This, this screen is from that only. Okay? So, if you experiment, you may get the similar results. So, when the block turned orange like you know this is the low probability of uh, action failure, medium probability of action failure and this is the high probability of action failure. So, this way you can get that. So, the uh, probability action failure is medium if it is orange okay? and you can see you can see it is medium it's just for example for our case it was medium okay and then the results validation in this particular case the color of process block is orange of course we see saw that and the probability of action failure is included in the opportunistic control mode range we explained it earlier that where it is reduced and then here you can see so block is in the opportunistic model okay so thus the simulation through running several iteration proposed a lost of action some lost of action to improve the reliability index so if something is being the sequence of action is lost then definitely if we can find out that we can improve the human reliability in this particular case. Now, 
coming to the advantages of this particular system or this particular technique. So, the technique uses the same principle for retrospective and predictive analysis, uh, prospective analysis, analysis because you can do it after accident or when you have a system you can predict also. Okay. The approach is very conscious and well structured. It follows a well laid out system of procedure. The technique allows the direct quantification of the human inner probability and it also allows the evaluator using the CREAM method to specifically tailor the use of technique to contextual situation. So, these are the advantages but it has some disadvantage what is it is very lengthy as I mentioned I was showing you the result one by one but uh, it is so quick appears to be so quick but no when you actually perform it it is very very lengthy it takes lot of time to get into one point ok. So, it is a very lengthy process and CREAM also requires an initial expertise in the field of human factors. If you are not expert in this field, you will not be able to perform it. Okay? So, that is disadvantages and uh, it may appear rather complex for an uh, experienced user. It happens as, as you go into detail, it becomes more complex in nature and cream does not put forth potential means by which identified errors can be reduced. Okay? So, we do not know how do we do. Maybe we can get a direction, but it is very difficult to exactly pinpoint that what do you do and then how do you reduce it. Okay? So, these are the disadvantages. So, what do we need? We need pen, paper, spreadsheet and the reliability software. So, here we have an example of the reliability workbench. You can work out with this. Maybe you can have some other software which is in this particular field. Okay? That is all for this particular tool uh, and I believe uh, we are almost at the end of uh, uh, no different tools and techniques discussion about the cognitive and behavioral ergonomics. Okay? So, that is all and maybe we have some more tool or small discussion about the environment that will go ahead in the last week of our program. Thank you. Okay? Coming uh, before concluding this about uh, you know this particular tool I would like to summarize it as it is a modeling application of course it is a modeling application for cognitive reliability and error analysis method a novel of course it is a novel approach and promising tool useful in order to manage the human factors in production process. It is very important and it is desirable to develop more precise framework and empirical testing of the performance uh, measure and action research and it is necessary to develop more industry studies. So, here we have lot of scope in the in the field of you know doing lot of research here. Uh, many of my students are actually working in this particular field and they are developing different uh, like doing the case studies and trying to understand this human reliability concept in complex situation or situation awareness how how that can improve the whole system performance and reduce the accidents or uh, some kind of incidents in a system. Okay? That is all for CREAM and that is all for human reliability as a whole uh, whatever tools and techniques available here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.